What's up you guys, this is Professor Ron with OneHourProfessor.com and today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about blogging and specifically blogging tips for beginners. Now, blogging, especially for beginners, it can be a really difficult thing to do, right? Because there are so many different guru types that are out there and so many different ones to follow and there is so much conflicting information that it's hard to know the right actions to actually take when you start out. Now, I feel like I'm, you know, cause some people will sit there and say, well, Ron, you're a guru. I don't really look at myself as a guru. I look at myself as someone who's in the trenches doing this stuff that has had success, that is then telling others how to do it. So I'm not just one of those that like talks about things that I think you should do. I'm talking about things that I actually do, right? And if you aren't aware, I have nine different blogs, a whole different portfolio of different blogs that I run uh, with a team that earns me tens of thousands of dollars a month. And in addition to that, I blog over at onehourprofessor.com. But anyway, in today's video, what I wanna do is I'm going to pretend like I'm talking to myself when I first started out and give 11 pieces of advice that I wish that I would have heard when I was starting out as a blogger. So that being said, let's go ahead and begin. All right, so my first piece of advice, and this is a uh, pretty important one, is to stick it out for an entire year and do your work consistently. So what do I mean by this? Well, a lot of times people, when they start a blog, they think, okay, well, I'm gonna try really, really hard for three or four months. I'm gonna blog like crazy, do all this stuff. They don't see any results and they quit. Uh, that is the wrong way to go about this. The reality is blogging, especially nowadays with the way that Google is and other search engines, to get picked up in search engines and to start getting traffic, it takes a fair bit of time. So what I always tell people is when you're starting out, be willing, you know, if you start today, don't stop until a year from now. You wanna give it an entire year before you even consider shifting or anything at all, because if you work consistently during that time for that entire year, good things are absolutely gonna happen. Number two, and this is a hard one for beginners, is don't focus on money, focus on your production, right? So this is a really difficult one because everybody that starts a blog, they start it and they, you know, they see people like me and say, well, you make, you know, 20, 25,000 or, or more. There's people who make way more than I do every single month. And they think, well, I wanna make that. Well, I didn't make that overnight, you guys. It took me years and years and multiple different blogs to get to this point. And most likely it's gonna take you years to get there as well. So instead of focusing on money within the first year, I always tell people focus on your production goals, meaning make a production goal. So something like, hey, I'm going to write two blog posts every single week for the entire year. Focus on those production goals because in the beginning, when you're starting a blog out, you don't really have control. There's a lot of external things that are kind of working against you, but the one thing that you can control is you can control your own production. So focus on not the money, but the actual production that you yourself deliver every single week. Next, and this is a really important one, maybe the most important on the whole list, is to make sure that you click on the like button of this video and also click on the subscribe button of my channel so that you don't miss out on future content and you can become part of my community and talk to me and I'll get to know you. But anyway, the real next part is that you need to trust the process. So what do I mean by this? Well, as I said earlier, it takes about a year for a blog to really start gaining momentum and kind of take off, okay? It takes a full 12 months. It's really, really difficult at month five, six, seven, after working pretty hard every single week, consistently, week after week, it gets really hard at that time to trust the process because you're doing this stuff and you're looking at people like me and you're like, this guy's a liar, this is not working. I assure you that if you are doing the right things, if you are working hard, creating great content, better than others, networking as much as you can, your content is going to grow. Your business is going to grow. Think about any business that is started, right? They usually say, hey, can you go without taking a paycheck for two years, okay? Blogging, I'd say you could probably take some money off the table a little quicker than that. But generally speaking, if you were to do a physical location business, it takes two years and you expect that slow growth. Expect the same with a blog. It takes time to actually have success. But if you trust the process, you can actually be successful with it. Number four is to aim to create the best piece of content all the time with whatever it is that you're writing about. 
right? So this is important because when you're starting out a blog, you know, you may be like, well, I don't have all the expertise as all these other people. You know, I'm not 100% sure if I'm an expert in this. You can research and you can write, right? Assuming that you're writing all your own content, you can do that. All you have to do, really, I tell people, I mean, there's, there's really, uh, you know, complicated ways of doing this, but the simplest way to do it, look at the piece of content that you're gonna create, go into Google, look at the top three results in Google, okay? After you've reviewed those top three results, that right there is what Google is looking for. That's what Google wants. I mean, that's why they're at the top of their results, right? Look at what they're doing, find ways to kind of slice and dice and combine and detract and get rid of things that aren't really necessary and create a piece of content that is better than any of the things that you're actually seeing on Google. If you're able to do that and you do that consistently with the content that you create, good things will inevitably happen by the end of the first year. Number five, super common one and also a super big mistake. So don't just write it and hope that they will come. Because I have some bad news for you, that's not really how it goes. So oftentimes, a lot of people will just write some reasonably good content, right? Not the best content, kind of, kind of good, decent content. And they'll think, okay, well, if I just write five blog posts every single week, and I do this week after week, you know, after a whole year, I'm gonna have you know over 150 articles, and that's gonna do really well, right? No, because you don't just want to create content, write it, and just leave it. Everything that you create with your content should have a purpose. Everything that you're doing with your content, you should really have a focus to it so that when you are writing it, you're thinking of, okay, how is it possible that I'm going to eventually be able to get search engine traffic to my site with this piece of content? And usually, you know, people like to just write and then just leave it and go on to the next piece. Don't do that. Be the individual that writes the content, reviews it, make sure it's really good, and then reaches out to other bloggers and maybe tells them, hey, I linked to you in this article, if you're linking to them. Or maybe you're reaching out and saying, hey, I have this really good resource. Uh, if you think that your readers would appreciate it, I'd love for you to share it if you'd be willing. That Those sort of relationships, those sort of things, that actual post-production uh, marketing that you do for your actual content after you create it is really what moves the needle. It's not a bulk number of, you know, if I create a thousand articles, all of a sudden it's all, gonna do really, really well. That's not really what you should focus on. What you should focus on is creating quality content and then making sure that after it is created, marketing it to other people so that they're aware of it. Because when you're starting out, you guys, nobody's gonna know that you exist and they're not gonna see your content anyway unless you market it to them through social media, building up relationships with other people, etc. Number six and also another really common thing is that realize that the numbers that you see in your analytics, every single person that visits your blog is an actual person. This isn't just a number on a screen. You know, if someone comes to a blog post and, and is looking at your blog post, realize that there's a person on the other side of that computer actually viewing your blog post. Just understanding that and realizing that and, and having that mentality is going to make sure that when you're creating your content, when you're doing everything that you're doing, that you're doing it you know, understanding the end user and with the end user in mind, which will inevitably lead to better content and just a better blog overall. Number seven, realize that your personality is a strength. So one really common thing that people have when they start out is they say, well, you know, I'm not a big brand. I can't do this. I can't compete with all these bigger brands out there. You know, my, my blog's just me. That's not really much compared to these big brands. That's true. And that's actually a strength because here's the reality of the situation. People like to connect with other people. They don't like to connect with brands, especially the way that social media is and just in general how we are as a society at this point. We've become a lot more accustomed to connecting with people, with influencers and that sort of thing, as opposed to big brands. So realize that your personality is a strength. Utilize your personality in your writing. You know, if you're doing YouTube videos as well, use your personality. Understand that your individual personality is actually a big strength and it can definitely set you apart from other big brands out there, but that's not a negative. That's actually a very big positive because it's much more relatable when you're authentic with people. So number eight is answer questions for the content that you create. So this is a pretty simple one, but I think one that a lot of people overlook. When you're starting out, uh, it's really tempting to go after these uh, you know, keywords and terms that have a lot of search volume, et cetera, but you're not really gonna rank for things in Google because you're so new. 
So instead of doing that, just focus on answering questions. And I, I always like to go with who, what, when, where, why, and how, okay? So let's think about this from a perspective of, let's say that we have a blog that is focused on dogs, okay? All that we need to do is go into Google and just put how do dogs, right? All these different things right here, these are potential blog posts, okay? So that's what I mean. What you wanna do is you wanna focus on answering questions in the beginning. I really push people to do this because those questions are typically going to be lower competition and also lower search volume. But when you're starting out, those are the type of things that you can rank for because they're what's called long tail keywords. In other words, they're the things that the bigger brands usually aren't too focused on because the search volume just isn't that high for the most part. Number nine, and kind of going on that same point, it's important to understand that low competition and low search volume is actually a great thing. So low competition, if you're using a tool like Ahrefs or Longtail Pro or SEMrush, they all give you a competitive score on how difficult it would be to rank for a specific keyword, right? That's what they basically do. So when you're looking at those, a lot of people say, well, try to go for really low competition stuff, you know, a keyword that's under five in terms of competition. So it just means that basically that, that keyword, that phrase is not that competitive compared to all the other things that you could write about. So always go for the long, low competition when you're starting out, but understand that going for low search volume is also good. You can go as low as 10 searches a month because the reality is you guys, 10 searches a month isn't really 10 searches a month in all the different keyword tools, okay? Even in Google, the data that they give you, that's not correct. So they'll say 10 searches a month, but it's actually only for that phrase. So let's jump back to my screen here and we can see here, how do dogs get heartworm, right? How do dogs get heartworm? That's what they have. But when you're looking in a uh, keyword tool, it's gonna focus on that phrase specifically. How do dogs get heartworm? Not how do dogs get heartworms, right? Or how do dogs get heartworms from other dogs? It doesn't focus on that. It just focuses on that first one, which was how do dogs get heartworm, right? So because of that, it's just going to say, okay, well, there's 10 searches a month for how do dogs get heartworm. But what it doesn't tell you is how do dogs get heartworms has 100 searches a month, and how do dogs get heartworms from other dogs has 30 searches a month, et cetera. And it really adds up over time. So it's okay to go for those really low search volume keywords as well in the beginning. I actually really think that most people should when they start out. That said, I also think that people should like this video if you're enjoying it and subscribe to the channel so that you become part of my community and you don't miss out on the future content. I'd love for you to be a part of the community and ask me questions and you know all that kind of stuff, but you need to subscribe to do so. But anyway, uh, number 10 is to eliminate distractions. This one is a very important one, but seldom followed. So I always tell people when you're starting out a blog, you need to understand, first off, start it and work on it for a whole year. Commit for a whole year. Do not start new projects. Don't get shiny object syndrome. Don't say, oh, I gotta try this, I gotta try this. It's tempting too, especially when you first get into online business. Really, really tempting. Don't do that. And also make sure that you focus on the content itself. Okay. Don't focus on how pretty your blog is. Don't focus on, you know, how nice your logo is. You can take a little bit of time to build those if you want. You don't really need to, but I understand a lot of beginners, they want to do that. So you can take a little bit of time, but after it's built, stop focusing on it. Don't spend too much time on it. What you really need to spend all your time on is the actual content itself, making sure that you create great content and eliminate all distractions that are out there otherwise. And number 11, the one I'm gonna leave you with is do not compare yourself to others. This is what I would call the death kiss for a lot of the new bloggers out there. They start out and they look at someone like me and they're like, well, he's making, you know, whatever, 20, 25,000 a month. I'm not even close to that. I'll never get there, right? Or you're looking at someone who just started six months ago and they're an outlier and they're making 10,000 a month. You're like, I'll never get there. Don't do that. Don't compare yourself to other people. Just make sure that all that you do right now when you're starting out is you create your production goals and you compare yourself to yourself week over week, right? Was I able to create three blog posts last week? Yes. Did I do that this week? Yes. Good. I'm on the right track. You need to understand that comparing yourself to others is a really great way to demotivate yourself and really slow yourself down and not reach your full potential because you'll likely quit 
out of frustration. So it's okay to look at others for inspiration. You know, if you look at other bloggers out there and you're like, this is really inspiring. This person does this and it's so cool that they do that. That's fine. But don't look at other people and compare and then feel bad about yourself and say, well, I just can't do this and give up. Because the reality is if you don't give up and you actually push through the entire first year, it's very likely that you'll have some level of success to build on. And then, you know, you could end up leaving your full-time job and doing everything you wanted. And, you know, you'd be able to be in a situation to where you're working from home like me and you're very happy with what it is that you're doing. So there it is, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, as I mentioned in the video, make sure that you click on the like button so that uh, YouTube will share this with other people. And also subscribe to the channel so that you're part of my community and you don't miss out on future content. Otherwise, guys, as always, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate every single one of you. Uh, for supporting me and helping me grow this channel. Uh, and if you'd be willing to tell other people about it, I'd really appreciate that too. But uh, otherwise, guys, thanks as always, and I will see you in the next one.